Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Ask Tom TV. It's been a little while because I've been traveling to India for the Oracle Code Conference and the Yathra Tours, both which are fantastic events. But it's back into the fold with Ask Tom and we had a question come in yesterday which was about what I call filling in the blanks and the fact that databases generally store sparse data, just the, the data of interest. And sometimes we want to pad that out with, um, with null or blank data. So to set the scene, we created a table called facts as provided by our poster and we tried to fill in the blanks. So let's have a look at that now. So let's start with the table as provided by the poster of the original question. He called his table fact and it looks like this. It's got an as of date and a type and a value. Let's put in the three values provided in the test case. Don't we love it when people give us test cases? And there's our three rows and to actually see them, we'll just run a select statement ordering by the as of date. So there's the three rows that we actually have. Three rows, 31st of March, 30th of June, 31st of August, each one being the end of the month. What we want to do though, is actually pad out the missing values. We can see we haven't got April, we haven't got May, and we haven't got July. What we really want to do is be able to run some sort of magical SQL like this one, which pads out the data and lets the F type and F value columns simply roll down as if those values were continuing throughout the missing months. The question is, how do we do it? So here's how my thought process works. The first thing I need if I'm gonna generate that information is what's the lowest value for the as of date and what's the highest value for the as of date. So I'll start with that, just a very simple query, min and max of as of date from the fact table. And there they are, 31st of March, 31st of August. That gives me the range as to what I'm going to use. Now, because I'm building up my thought process, what I'll do is I'll simply refer to that from now on as a table called boundaries. And I'll do that just using a with clause. So boundaries now becomes that information I just had. Using the familiar connect by dual syntax, I can now generate the six rows that I need to do, filling in all the gaps. What I'm using is the add months clause, starting at the low value and adding a month each time until the add months clause exceeds or equals the high value. That gives me the six rows I need. That's a useful table to have, so I'll give that a name as well. So my first little with clause was called boundaries. I'll call that one all the months I require. That's now a table I can refer to in subsequent queries. Because that's effectively a superset of the data in the fact table, what I'll do is I'll simply take my fact table, out and join it to the all months table, looking for all those as of dates where they're present. So when I run that, you can see I've got my six rows and I've almost got the information I need. The only problem is, because it's a standard out of join, where we do have data in the fact table, we receive some information, but where we don't, we've got nulls. What we want to do is pick up the last value here and roll it down. Let's move on. What I'll call that information now is something called sparse data. So that information is my sparse data. It's got all the data I need except for those nulls which need to be filled in. Now I said I'll be needing to pick up the last value. That gives me a hint that I'm going to use the analytic function last value. The name suggests what its possible use would be. So I'm gonna pick up the month, rather than just picking up the F type and F value, I'll use last value of them, ignoring any nulls, and picking up the information ordered by month. So when I run that, there's the information I required. And we're done. We've filled in the blanks with a dynamic range of months without having any nulls as well. So there you have it, filling in the data using some SQL. I really like using the with clause as we had in this example because it lets us build up the SQL as our thought process sort of evolves and digests the problem. That way for the next person that comes along, they'll be able to easily understand what we were doing and what our motivations were. Don't get me wrong, you could actually probably write this simpler and more compact using some more advanced SQL features. And in fact, if you go to the question as shown in the link in the comments section, you'll see that uh, someone used a lateral clause to achieve the same purpose. But I think we lose some of the nice maintainability um, of the with clause, which almost self-documents our SQL. But that's it for Ask Tom TV. I'll see you next time with another episode when we see some more interesting questions. Keep them coming on Ask Tom. See you later.